mixtape was produced by the Assyrian Universal Alliance of Chicago. It deals with the question of refugees in the Middle East. The Assyrians joined the Allied cause in World War I, being promised autonomy for their participation. In 1920, Britain supported a proposal to the League of Nations for a separate state for the Assyrians who fought so valiantly with the Allies during the war. That area that was being offered is where the present borders of Turkey, Iraq, and Iran meet. However, the Assyrians were betrayed and were not given the autonomous state that they were promised in the very beginning. Thousands of Assyrian men shed their blood and died in vain. Rather than receiving the victor's laurel wreath, they found that they had become hostages in their own environment as Iraq was granted their independence in 1932. The noose was beginning to be tightly drawn upon the Assyrians of Iraq, for there was no autonomy as promised, no independent state, not even representative government. The Assyrian Christians were viewed as a dangerous enemy to the new Islamic government, a threat to their sovereignty. From this time on, there was a concentrated effort by the Iraqis to disperse and subdue them to prohibit any backlash from the Assyrians. They were persecuted and imprisoned, beaten and scorned. This prompted a mass migration of the maltreated Assyrians from their homeland. Several thousand were massacred and many thousands sought refuge in neighboring Syria, where it was an autonomous region until it was incorporated into Syrian statehood in 1942. Other Assyrians settled in Lebanon, where they were permitted more freedom. Assyrians also fled to Iran. In 1961, when the civil war broke out in Iraq between the Kurds and Arabs, we experienced a new wave of exodus of Assyrians from their homeland. The conflict between Iraqi uh, central government and Kurdish was over 1975, when uh, my family and many other families took refuge to Iran. We left in Iraq, we left behind in Iraq whatever we possessed we had, such as lands, houses, even uh, money in the banks were confiscated, and properties were confiscated, even the households, furnitures, things like that. We just flew with our souls and uh, that's all. Thousands of Assyrians fled Iraq. Some went to Iran, and thousands of others headed to the Western Hemisphere, making brief stops in Lebanon and Greece. And we're hearing, of course, from families. We're hearing through the World Council of Churches, through the International Refugee Associations, the uh, Human Rights Associations of the world, all reporting on, uh, unfortunately, a directed and an almost systematic uh, extermination of the Assyrian minorities as well as other Christian minorities in the Middle East. We are very grateful what the Assyrian Universal Alliance had done for us and still it's working to complete what we have got left back. And we are very grateful of the United States citizens and leadership that have given us this opportunity to come and live in this free country. The Subcommittee Office of Refugees in the U.S. Senate, headed by Senator Edward Kennedy, helped the Assyrian Universal Alliance refugee cause considerably. I want to say as the chairman of the Senate Refugee Committee over the period of the last uh, 14 years in the United States Senate, that I have valued very highly the close association that uh, the Senate uh, Committee has had with the uh, Alliance for so many years to try and help uh, refugees, uh, particularly uh, Syrian refugees uh, from uh, Lebanon and also uh, from Turkey. Uh, we have worked uh, together on, on that uh, cause over a number of years. We were able to get some resources through the United States uh, Congress and Senate to permit the reunification of families and to permit uh, 
uh, individuals who are being uh, persecuted for religious and political reasons uh, to come here to uh, the United States and to travel uh, to other countries where they'd be able to live in peace and dignity and to be able to join uh, with their uh, families. There are thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands of people who are not settled yet, who are wandering around the world looking for a home, seeking refuge. And uh, believe me, aside from the United States and a few other countries, there aren't many other people who are prepared to give a refugee a home. And um, even though for those who are settled, they still, they still have their own um, they still have their own problems of yearning to, for their country and for their people, for their culture. Uh, but um, like I said, there are out there in the wilderness hundreds of thousands of Assyrians without homes and are still trying uh, from country to country, knocking on every door, not leaving one, not leaving one stone unturned, trying to find a, a place to live, some people to accept them. Uh, but they're still refugees, they are still stateless, and they are suffering. It is so terrible to leave their homeland as long as they can remember background people and to settle in a climate that's completely different, among a people quite different, and the whole business of being a stranger in a new land is very, very difficult for them. People coming from a, a Middle Eastern society to a complex American society where freedom was unlimited, were having hard times to deal with the day-to-day -day and school problems. Most of these people as adults as well as youngsters, refused to accept the status of a refugee. Uh, they considered themselves as if a third-class citizen being in a great society. I'm very grateful for all of the Assyrians it's been my privilege to meet for their high standard, high moral standards, high expectations. It's, it's a privilege, but we must also know where they are, why they have come, why they can't go back, and why they must be given a new home and a chance to make a new life. Turkey is now the new area of concern for the Assyrian Christian minorities in the Middle East. Sixty years ago, there were over three million Christians in Turkey. The population was mainly Assyrians, Armenians, and Greeks. Through a program of mass genocide, the Turks have systematically purged their country of Christians by massacres, murders, and persecution. Today, there are only 50,000 Assyrians, 50,000 Armenians, and about 10,000 Greeks. Unfortunately, they are succeeding in driving the Christian minorities from their homes and villages in Turkey. Those who are fortunate are capable of fleeing Turkey and seeking refuge in various Western countries. The Turkish Assyrian has an 83% illiteracy rate, which makes resettlement in a foreign environment very difficult. What then is the best solution for the Assyrian refugee problem? It seems that every race or every nationality, or don't use the word homeland, has a place where they can live in safety, preserve their ethnicity, preserve their roots, shall we say, mm -hmm. is the modern word. We know our beautiful Jewish friends have a new state of Israel. Oh, and our brothers, the Greeks, were forced out of Cyprus. They had a place to go to. It does seem unfortunate that our Assyrians don't have that safe haven, that place they can say, when all else fails, here I can rest my head in safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's what we desperately I think, though, that the idea of trying to develop a, a safe haven or a neighborhood for your group is, uh, as John pointed out, something very much needed. And also, I believe it's very timely mm -hmm. to seek a, some, a solution like this. However, the U.S. does speak out. Several high-ranking American congressmen think that a one-place solution is the answer. And the only permanent solution the only solution is going to bring peace and uh, give them 
an ample opportunity to develop themselves and their children uh, and their families is to have a homeland somewhere. Uh, I realize there are short-term solutions uh, for those who are in critical need at the present time, and that is on the asylum or refugee basis by the international community. But we must uh, convince the rest of the world that the only permanent solution is a one-place or homeland solution. A one-place solution is the ideal solution. And I think it comes back to the point again as to whether or not uh, there's a willingness to do it, a willingness to help. Uh, it's the attitude of the people involved. It's an attitude of the countries involved. If they're sincerely interested in helping out these people who have been persecuted, there's no doubt about it. The facts are there. The history is there of uh, both the Armenian people and the uh, Syrian people. And if there is a willingness to, to help out, if there is a willingness to take care of these problems, then it can be done. What your feelings are toward a one-place solution for our people somewhere in the Middle East? Well, I think this hope should be kept uh, alive. And uh, the next time I speak on the floor of the Senate, uh, I will advise my colleagues of the deep yearning and desire uh, that the Assyrian people have uh, for some place that they can call home.